flooding is getting worse and worse with every minute I'm standing here. We are standing about seven feet above sea level. Uh, the water's probably about fo a foot up now. We're expecting the crest to be nine and a half feet, the surf to be nine and a half feet, which means we're probably going to get another foot and a half of water. Anything below ground level in Atlantic City is going to get flooded. So we received a call on a Friday afternoon, two o'clock in the afternoon time frame from uh, um, applications engineer with uh, national or the uh, New York City um, Housing Authority, and we everyone knew that uh, Hurricane Sandy had went through. So this guy was asking for a lot of steam units, not necessarily real big units, but a lot of units, big number, 25 units or 30 units or something. We knew that this was going to be a very dangerous storm, and the storm has met our expectations. Actually, Sandy exceeded them. Around 9 p.m., the storm produced a record surge at Battery Park in Manhattan, 13.88 feet, breaching the seawall and flooding the area. Manhattan's waterfront seemed to disappear as the surge rushed over the wall. It's the unknown. It's the storm of the century. Roads and cars were quickly covered. Ground Zero was engulfed. And across the harbor in Brooklyn, there was so much flooding around Coney Island that emergency responders couldn't reach the area. So he sent us a spreadsheet, and his biggest question was, how many can you uh, supply so that we can go to these other people and, and get whatever they've got? We looked at the list, made a few phone calls, and I called him back and said, we can supply everything you need. He said, so you can get everything on the list. I said, I can supply everything on the list. If you want to go to one company, and just up front, what I'm going to do, I'm going to these other rental companies and renting the equipment from them, re-renting to you. I don't own the equipment, but I can provide everything under one house so you just deal with one company. He said, that was perfect, so that's where we started moving forward. Uh, we worked through contract negotiations, started sh shipping the equipment on Saturday afternoon, and by the following Friday, we had put um, oh, 25, 30 systems on site up there. Um, 50, 60 truckloads of equipment came from eight different companies, five different companies, six different companies, eight different states. So we, we brought it from Oklahoma, Texas, Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, Florida. We brought it from all over the country to get it up there too. And, and the, there were several issues. One, uh, a lot of these were oversized loads. Uh, so we had to get special permitting and special variances so we could run you know, tandem truckers and run all night to get the equipment up there all night and all day. The, uh, the steam is used for heating, uh, primarily heating these buildings up there. And this is first of November, so they're getting into a, a spot where all the boiler rooms flooded. The hurricane came in, they got 12 foot wall of water came in and flooded all the boiler rooms, which mostly they're in basements or either on the bottom floor. So all of those were completely underwater, couldn't do anything with them. Heating for all the buildings, um, a little bit of um, uh, domestic stuff, some domestic hot water, but mainly building heat. So what they knew is that they didn't get some temporary steam in there, get the building heat back up, all the buildings were gonna freeze up, and that would be a major disaster for the entire city. And we, we had lots of things going on. No power in the city, um, no gasoline, and none of the gas stations had, had power to them, so they didn't have any gasoline. The streets were blocked with cars that had floated around, been washed around, big piles of sand. I mean, they were taking front end loaders, literally going down the streets, shoving automobiles and sand out of the way so we could bring an emergency boiler in to get uh, steam back up to these buildings. They were renting generators from everybody they could find all over the country to supply power, because again, no power to run these temporary boilers with. It was a big, big project. We sent about 25 systems, boiler systems up there, and some of those were, the boilers were so big, you know, up to 75,000 pounds an hour, so we had to send the boilers and the feed systems and the water softeners and water conditioning equipment, all of those in pieces, and then put them on site. And then those units, because they weren't built to operate outside in that type of weather, they built big structures and, and enclosures over top of them. Um, some of the equipment lasted, that was up there for six, eight months, most of it was up there for about 20 months before the job was over with. One other thing that we did, they asked us to do, uh, was supply manpower. Their people, mechanical people, boiler room guys, were tied up, just you know, busy as they could be, just 
doing their stuff and trying to get their equipment back up what they could back up and running. So they ask us to provide technicians not only to start our equipment and train their operators, but then to stay on site for emergency maintenance. So we ended up having people stay on site uh, around the clock for the entire time the equipment was there, which is something that's, we do a lot of that operational stuff um, from time to time where customers don't have operators and we'll, we'll you know, put our guys up there to operate the equipment, but not on this type of, uh, of a scale where we're up there, you know, for 20 months we've got people on site. One other thing we did, we, they were, again, they were short on manpower, so they asked if, if we would supply people to oversee the installations of all this equipment. So I went up and sent another one of my technical guys up. Um, so I was there for a week, he was up there for another two weeks. The entire time they were doing the installation, just walking through with the contractors and showing them, hey, run this here, this here. These, they're good mechanical contractors. They're not accustomed to installing temporary boilers. That's, that's all that, that we do in, in that division that I run. So we've got a lot of experience at it. We did a, spent a lot of time, a lot of 18, 20 hour days uh, work, working with those guys, uh, hooking the equipment up and showing them how to run the pipe, what size to run, you know, all of that, that work. And, and uh, this project is typical of Ware's expert, expertise in that um, any challenge that comes up, we're ready to, to, to you know, to, to meet that challenge. We, we were awarded this job because we told them we could do everything they wanted to have done. They could go to one company, one stop shop, we could take care of everything. Supply all the equipment, the operators, the oversee the installation, uh, startup guys, so that, that's, that's the reason we got the job and we get a lot of jobs because of that. We don't say no, we figure out how to come up with a solution and take care of the customer. That's what we do.